Okay, now that the terminologies are done. Now I started talking about state of a system. And I said that the thermodynamical state of any system is determined by specifying a set of measurable properties, right? There are two main kinds of properties that we talk about. One are called intensive and the other ones are called extensive. Okay. Intensive properties are also called point properties. They exist at all points of the system. And these are properties like temperature and pressure. They also do not depend on the mass of the system. Extensive properties on the other hand, depend on the mass of the system. And these include things like volume. So I'm gonna say something for people that are not in like not in Newtonian. I'm gonna refer back to Newtonian for a second. So if, you, if that doesn't make any sense to you, it's okay, don't worry about it. it. It doesn't matter. I just want them to think about something. So people from Newtonian, do you guys remember when we talked about fluids? We said that when we observe fluids, we observe them, and, and it's okay, you guys can just listen in. We observe them as if they were volume elements that were traveling forward. We could either keep track of every single volume element as it passes through, which becomes an impossibility, or we could stand at one point and watch them go by. Do you remember that conversation? Okay, so similar to that conversation, we are going to talk about thermodynamical systems. So remember when I talked about this properties, I said intensive properties exist at all points in a system. So let me try to think about what that means. So if my system consists of one mass point particle, in a three-dimensional space. Oh, everybody understands this terminology, right? What, what does that dot with, an air, with a circle mean? It's coming out of the page. So usually people draw it like this, but that kind of doesn't feel right. So I generally do that with a dot. That means it's coming out of the page. So you have to understand that this, this is this plane right here, but that dot is actually coming out towards you, okay? That is literally in three dimensions. Make sense? Okay, bless you. Okay, so now how do I define this one mass particle? What do I need? I need to know it's X, Y, Z, let's start there. And I also need to know its velocities, if it's moving. I will probably also need to know its temperature, pressure, volume. Keep adding. Happy? Now I put another particle here. Uh, pick a color. Green. Green. There's another particle here. What do I have to do? X1, Y1, Z1, X1 dot. Oh, everybody understands X1 dot, Y1 dot, Z1 dot, right? Okay. Anyone for refresher? What does it mean? It's the derivative, right? 
And the derivative of x is? Velocity. Velocity. So that basically means it's velocity in the x, velocity in the y, velocity in the z. Oh, I should also add time in there, right? If it's an evolving system, we should also add. Eh. OK, this is going to get fun just, just as it is. T2, P2, V2, blah, 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 blah. Add another one. Pick a color. Orange. Orange? Red? Yes. OK, red. X3, Y3, Z3, da, 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 da. So if we had one particle, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine variables to worry about, at least. If we have two, how many variables should we worry about? If we have three, how many should we worry about? Does that make sense? All at the same time. And do we ever have three gas molecules in a jar? How many usually things that we talk about when we talk about gases? What did we call it? A mole. And what was a mole? Or elephants or gas molecules or people. Multiply that with the number of variables you have to worry about. Would you like to do that? And then watch every single one. When one. <laughs> Most people won't. <laughs> so then what do we do? Instead of worrying about every single individual particle, we worry about the collection of them. And the fancy word for that Ensemble. So rather than keeping track of the three particles and what each X is doing and what each Y is doing and what each Z is doing and what each velocity is doing in every single coordinate, what's the temperature? What's the pressure of it? What, like whatever the things that are happening. Instead of that, what we do is we analyze the average properties of the system as a whole. So in an ensemble, instead of keeping track of each individual particle, we keep track of the properties of the ensemble as a whole. So I'll give you an example. When you find the temperature of this room, how do you do that? Right. So you take an average of this room and you say this room is at, you know, about 70 degrees, right? Is that always true for every part of this room? But on average, this room is comfortable to be sitting in. That's what you want. So an ensemble is not necessarily every single point in space. It's just an average of everything. We will talk more about this when we get into um, statistical thermodynamics. We'll talk more about ensembles and that's when it's gonna become very important. Okay, now, once we have established that, we now just have to define what do we mean by thermodynamical properties.